This is the Vivor 12 kilogram melting furnace. They sent this for me to review, so I'm gonna put it through some tests and see how it measures up. I've made my own furnaces out of propane tanks and it works really well. I've made bigger furnaces out of kegs. This will be the first factory made furnace that I've tested. Let me show you what we got, how to set it up, and we'll get this ready to go. Now, upon unboxing, it comes with everything you need. It comes with two burners, your flow nozzles, gas regulator. That's important to control the flow of gas, of course. Looks like a handle for the lid. So there's no hinge on this, so you're just gonna take it on and off. That's fine. Got some fire brick, that's essential. You got the lid here. It comes with a very large crucible, and it came with a longer fire brick, and that's for the forge setup. Unfortunately, though, it broke in half. This will be perfectly functional. You can just put it back together. It'll work the same. It's just unfortunate that it broke. That just happens. Blame the UPS driver. Now this longer fire brick is supposed to set on the bottom if you're using it as a forge. You don't need this for melting. You will need this. We'll go over that later. It also comes with a set of tongs. And I hope that's for using in the forge for holding a hot piece of steel and not picking up your crucible. If the intent is to pick up your crucible with this, I would not recommend that. Again, these are not entirely fragile, but they're not strong, and especially when you heat it up. If you have this full of metal and you're gonna try to pick it up by the corner, you're asking for a blowout. You're asking for it to break. That can be super dangerous. Your lifting tongs are an essential part for working in a foundry. I would not trust these for lifting this. I'll show you what I use later. For the forge though, for holding a hot piece of metal, this is great. I've been wanting one of these. Now I got one. Probably look over the instructions before I actually review this thing. There's some small tightening bolts and it looks like these fit right in like so. And you can tighten those on and that's your burner setup. Screw on just like that. And then the two burners slide right in here. Maybe. Boy, that's a tight fit. Houston, we have a problem. I actually can't make it fit. So it looks like there's some metal burrs here where they cut this off, uh, preventing the burners from going in. It is really a tight fit. I'm just gonna take a chainsaw file and kind of go around the rim. Let's try that. There we go. Fitting two in at once seems to be a little difficult. So I'm gonna take this off and slide them in one at a time. And then hopefully these will slide back in like so. There we go. There, so that is a tight fit, but I think that's a good thing. Now it doesn't matter what brand you buy or if you build your own, the ceramic blanket is gonna come naked like this. So you've gotta seal it or coat it with something. Now I've used several products in the past. A very common one that's used is called Rigidizer. I've used Ludox. It's a very clear liquid that when you spray it on, kind of dries and holds everything together. It won't look like it's coated, but it's treated so those fibers aren't gonna blow off. That's totally fine to use. One tip, if you're spraying clear liquid on this stuff, it's very hard to see. So what I've done in the past is I put food coloring in there, make it as dark as you can, then spray it on. Then you can see where it goes. Personally, I don't like that as much because I'm lifting things in and out of here and it's a little more fragile. I like to have a little more rigid crust on there. Now, another product I've used is Green Patch 421. It's a thin refractory that you put on there and it hardens up pretty well. And then you have a nice crust on there. So if you bump it with your tongs, it's not gonna rip it. I like to use that. Now, I looked up how much Green Patch 421 cost and it's ungodly amount online. I got mine at Smith Sharp Firebrick Supply. I got a little bit of returned Green Patch from them for free. So if you have a local Firebrick Supply store, go in there with a smile on your face, maybe they can help you out. But another option is this Mineral Z Wash. It's zircon crystals, it works the same, very high refractory, and it's much, much cheaper. That's what my propane furnace is coated with. It's a hard crispy crust. It does flake off eventually, but then you just paint more on. You mix it with water. It's pretty simple and I would recommend that as well. It's not as good as Green Patch, but it's a lot cheaper and it still works. You can use any of those that you want, but do seal it with something. Ah, I really I could do a better job of that, I'm sure. I feel like I'm on the British baking show. Don't mess it up. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> there we 
we go. So it's all sealed and dried. That's a good hard crispy crust there. Now it did crack a bit as it was drying. So I just took the brush and painted another thin coat through the cracks. Now we're ready to go. We'll also test if it works in cold weather. It's like five degrees. Now before you use your crucible, you wanna put it in your oven, bring it to a pretty high temperature to make sure all the moisture is out of it so it's good and dry before you put it in your furnace here. Now I'll show you my lifting tongs. Now again, I don't wanna use those other tongs and lift it by the edge because when that's full of metal, that's a lot of pressure on a small area. You're just asking it to break. With the tongs, I can cradle the crucible and lift it up without putting all the stretches on the edges. So your tongs are gonna kinda have to be sized for the crucible you're using. This comes around like so, and just kinda holds it by the bottom like that. And then I also have a pouring ring. It's just a piece of flat bar bent into a size that'll hold the crucible. And I set it in like that and I can pour it. Again, that cradles it instead of putting stress on the edges. Now this is where you take your fire brick and you're gonna wanna put that in the bottom of your furnace. That's what you call a plinth. It just sets it up a little bit higher so it's not sitting directly on the bottom. And then put a piece of cardboard or some newspapers on the bottom because that'll create a layer of carbon there. So when you put your crucible on top, it doesn't stick to your plinth. At least it doesn't stick as easily. Okay, we're gonna start small with aluminum and see if we can get up the cast iron. But first, let's see how long it takes to melt the aluminum. I've never lit this, so I'm gonna try to do it a little safer. Ah, good grief. So, turn the fuel on and... The heat coming out of the opening did cause the metal to expand and it caused it to warp a little bit. However, it didn't really affect the performance, but just so you know. Three minutes in and I'm already starting to see the aluminum melt. I typically run my pressure between 10 and 20 psi, but for aluminum you could probably get away with lower. It's one of the drawbacks of cold weather, I'm losing pressure. I'm down below 10 psi and I want it higher than that. In cold weather, your tank will ice up and you can't maintain constant pressure. So I use some warm water and give it a hot bath and that keeps the pressure up. Typically, I melt pieces of scrap aluminum, but for whatever reason, a lot of people out there like to melt aluminum cans. So I figured I'd give that a try. Note, it doesn't fit through that hole. And there's so much pressure coming out, you don't want to put it through anyway. It's not going to make it into the crucible. However, it does melt those cans pretty fast when you put them in there. Now, it'll take a while to figure out how to control the temperatures of this furnace because it's really easy to overheat aluminum, which I did here. But this was just a test. Notice how I'm putting the crucible on a fire brick. You do not want to put a hot crucible on concrete because it will make the concrete explode or crack. Even the dross is making the concrete crack. And aluminum cans make a lot of dross, which is one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan. But I'll just scrape the dross off and we'll go for the pour. So we're at about 20 minutes time total, but it would have been a lot less if the tank hadn't froze up like that. So aluminum, check. Works really well. Whether you want to cast aluminum parts or melt aluminum cans. Alright, next let's step it up and try some copper. It's still hot. Now the regulator did crap out on me. It stopped flowing and I wasn't really sure why. 
I'm thinking because of the cold weather, it froze up. Now, I did get it to work again, and I'll talk a little bit more about the regulators at the end of the video. Copper, check. My stopwatch is at 18 minutes, so that's pretty fast. Now, I've never been able to melt cast iron, so if this thing can melt cast iron, I'll be very impressed. And that's the next one. Hold up, not so fast. Now, we have a contradiction. On the box, it says the maximum temperature is 2700 degrees. But in these directions, it says very clearly, it is forbidden to melt metals with melting points above 1350 degrees Celsius, such as iron and magnesium. Otherwise, the furnace will melt. Well, cast iron isn't exactly iron. Cast iron has a much lower melting point than iron itself. It depends on the alloy, but the melting point of cast iron is around 2200 degrees. The melting point of pure iron is 2800 degrees Fahrenheit which would exceed the melting of the furnace. The furnace is made of stainless steel, so it should be able to melt cast iron without melting. Just so you know, we'll be testing the limits of this furnace. Right on. Now my only source of cast iron is this big cast iron pipe. Cast iron is pretty brittle, so I'm hoping I can shatter it. I didn't think it'd be that easy. It must be really strong. I got a whole bunch of pieces. That is still red hot from the copper. Since it's still red hot, timing this one really isn't gonna matter. So we're just gonna see if it'll melt. Something burning off, I don't know what that is. took the pressure up to 20 psi and that's about as high as I'll go. I don't know what cast iron is supposed to look like, but this almost looks like it was bubbling. It was really weird and it didn't look like it was melting. But I took the crucible and decided to pour anything out anyway and lo and behold it did melt. There was just a lot of dross or oxidation or something that didn't want to melt along with it. There's the iron bar. And there's the oxidation. It, it almost looks like the rust that was on the outside of the pipe just stayed there. And the crystalline iron within is what melted. nipped a chunk of the ingot off just because I wanted to look in there and look at all those sparks. Definitely a bar of iron. Holy cow, I just melted cast iron. Cast iron? Check. So what is my opinion of the Vivor 12 kilogram melting furnace? Honestly, it works better than I thought. It outperforms any of my homemade furnaces. And the fact that it can melt cast iron Man, that's a whole new world for me. I've never been able to do that. It's a well-designed furnace with the two burners. It just really gets that heat up there. Honestly, I don't think you'd be able to build a furnace this good for the price they're selling it for. I don't know how they do that. I mean, I know how they do it. They make it in China and things are cheap in China. A couple of things about this. The gauge of metal, it is thin. 
And when I was heating it up, you can tell that there is some, a little bit of warping, a little bit of flexing of that metal. I think a thicker gauge would be better, but that's gonna increase the cost a lot too. These are made to be as affordable as possible. The handle here is loose. Now it was tight before, after melting, it is loose and it's wood. I don't know how long that's gonna last. So the handle does worry me. I can see that needing to be replaced. Actually, maybe I can tighten it up right now. Oh yeah, now it's tight. Never mind. Those screws just came loose for whatever reason, but it's tight now. Now the regulator it comes with, I've used these in the past and they're not my favorite. They're a cheaper regulator and they work, don't get me wrong, but I've had times when this will freeze up and it's like it gets sticky, the gas just won't flow and I don't know why. You kind of got to beat it and hit it and then all of a sudden it works again. This type of regulator I've used for years. It's never been a problem for me. It's a lot more expensive but it does work better. But again, they're trying to keep the cost as low as possible, so they're not gonna use the most expensive equipment. They're gonna use what works. And to turn it into a forge, just go like this. It sets right there like that. You put your fire brick in there and that can work as a forge. I can't comment on that because I don't do forge work, but I've always wanted a forge. That's a pretty cool feature. There is an affiliate link in the description, so you can get, I think, a discount on this. I don't know. I don't know if I get a commission off of this review or not. They just said, hey, do you want to do a review? And I was like, well, can I keep the furnace when I'm done? And they're like, you sure can. I was like, hot dog, send it over. So I gave them my address, and here it is. Other than that, I don't know. I'm not a good businessman. The fact that this comes with everything you need and two burners is the biggest selling point. This is the burner I use. It's one burner, and I paid 100 bucks for this on Amazon. It's a good burner, but this comes with two burners and the whole unit. Definitely a plus. So whether you want to build your own or buy a unit like this, now you have a little bit more information. Thanks for, to Vivor for giving me this new furnace. I think I'm going to keep using it. Thank you guys for watching. Come on back for some more cast iron projects. Bye-bye.